Today's video we start with a hydration chart. Am I hydrated? Aim for clear urine at least 10 times a day. Eat a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a quart of water before meals. Thank you. Next question, Harley, I have to present my English class on Thursday. Why we should not eat meat. The whole class eats meat. Do you have any ideas on how I can present it to the class? I'd love a response. <laughs> can you imagine what would Durenrata do if he had to go to class and give a presentation? What I would do would be bring a dog to bring the cutest little dog or cat you can find, bring it to class, bring it to class, and then maybe bring a knife to class or a fake knife, or just draw a knife on a piece of cardboard and make it, or whatever, and say. Grab the dog in your arm, grab the, the fake knife uh, with a picture of a knife and say, can anyone give me a reason why we shouldn't eat meat? <laughs> and then that's your end of your presentation. That's what I'd do. I would say, do you have pets? Do you have pets? If we're meant to eat meat, why do we have pets? You could, I could go on it for fucking 15 days talking about it. But the biggest one would just be grab the cute dog everyone can relate to, draw a fucking picture of a knife or cut it out of a magazine and put it to the dog's neck and say, can anyone here give me a reason why we shouldn't eat meat? Because I want to eat this, I want, I want to eat this dog. I want to eat this meat now. Why shouldn't we eat it? There you go. Done. Just be honest with people. Have fun with it. Blow them away with the truth. If gluttony was a sin, God doesn't know about carving the fuck up. <laughs> I truly believe that the system out there wants people under carbs. Because when you're under carbed, you're touchy. Even in the raw food world, people get under carbed and then they're all like, everyone's all fighting and shit. They, they get touchy, they can't understand constructive criticism, they see it as a personal attack. So even in the raw food world, in the fruitarian world, people don't get enough carbs and then they just take things personally. So one of the reasons I can keep such high, high spirits is high carbs, man. That's that's the that's the fucking main reason. I don't start my day engaging, communicating with people until I got my sugar into me, because otherwise I can't communicate effectively. People say, "Oh, you're addicted to sugar." It's a drug. It's a fucking nutrient, man. <laughs> Come out training with me. I'll deplete your glycogen, and then I'll put you on some mental health tests and see how you how you pass you'll fail because when your glucose de exhausted you you're on edge man so that's why i don't believe in emotional reading get your carbs in and then and then communicate get some sleep get some water and then communicate hey holly love your videos could you comment on tim van orden's video on lean muscles he's advocating that he wants fatty muscle not lean muscle um tim's like me he'll do controversial titles to get a bit of bit of talk tim's correct in that the body does burn fat but tim will be the first person to admit that when he did the mount washington race and got put on a glucose drip it was a glucose drip it wasn't a fat drip <laughs> but yeah no me and tim we get along and tim's a great athlete and definitely inspired me a lot in previous years I think you have to watch that video again and listen to the message Tim's really saying. He's 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 spot on. He's right, and you need sugars to perform. Otherwise, when Tim ran out of glucose that time and got, I think it was, I think it was Matt Washington race. I think it was. He got glucose exhausted and they put him on a drip, a glucose drip. And I've seen it happen to a lot of people. It happens to a lot of people. It happens to elite marathoners if they don't drink enough sugar, they get put on a glucose drip. A lot of elite marathoners take glucose drip the night before so they don't have to eat much so they can be super light nothing in the stomach but just be on a, a iv glucose drip or just drink the glucose bags the iv water uh, during the night time so your glycogen stores are up so tim is both correct in that video but he probably could have talked to better a bit more in depth and talks about that carbohydrate is what fuels peak performance 
as Tim Proves, as being one of the best stair climbers in the, in the world. Tim's doing that on sugars. You're not really burning much fat when you run upstairs. Um, does the salt from the sauce affect how many times you pee a night? And when looking at the label in the back of a jar of sauce, what should you look for as salt content? Thank you for your honesty and showing us what you eat day to day. Does eating cooked food slow you down the next day? Can you feel the difference between eating raw and eating cooked? Great question. When I'm looking at sauces, I look for under 300 milligrams per three ounces or 100 grams, roughly. Again, it's going to vary from people to people. You don't need to eat like I'm eating. If you want to eat just the fruits and the vegetables, that's the best. That's fine. That's great. If you don't want to do that or we can't get enough of it, then yeah, we've got backup plans. But I'm not saying ever that eating vegan pizzas is better than eating fruits, high-quality fruits that satisfy them. But it can be a backup plan, can't it? Um, if I eat salt at night time, yes, you urinate less during night time because salt, extra salt, holds water on your body. So it can, if you want to get bigger, eating more salt can help you. If you want to be leaner and lighter, low sodium definitely. That's all the models and boxes cut salt down before a photo shoot or a big fight so they're a bit leaner, a bit lighter. Unless you're like a super heavyweight, it doesn't matter because your weight class isn't uh, regulated. Um, thank you for your honesty. I like to be honest and transparent, 100%. Even if it gets criticized, I don't care. I want to be here for the people. I can handle criticism. <laughs> I want to help. If you can't handle criticism, you can't fucking help people. Does eating cooked food slow you down the rest of the day, next day? I can't eat rice and stuff for breakfast or lunch. It's just too heavy. It's got to be a nighttime thing only. Um, does it slow down the next day? Depends what you're doing. If I've got to get up and do a 6 a.m. time trial, then eating raw food the night before is best. The day before is best. But if you're going to go out and do a long, slow day, it doesn't really matter. If you want to like just get your fucking rhythm straight away, 6 a.m. in the morning, then fruit's the go. Um, but it, Otherwise, it takes you about 10 minutes to warm up, eating, eating the rice and stuff. Um, can I feel the difference? Because I'm eating so low fat, cooked vegan when I eat it, don't notice it too much. But if you're eating like high fat, greasy, fried vegan food, then it's, that's not the best, is it? It's not very healthy, so you're going to feel stodgy. It's like in a high fat, raw gourmet, you feel stodge. You're still, still stodge. So keep your sodium intake low, 1,500 milligrams, 1,000 milligrams, 2,000 milligrams. If you're doing a lot of sport, you can get away with it more because you just sweat it out. But what I like to teach people is write stuff down. Be objective. Have a food diary. Buy some little scales from a thrift store for two bucks and weigh everything. Just write stuff down. Just observe. Write down times you ate it, things like that. When you went out, stood sport, how you felt. Write things down. And then slowly you'll get a template that works. Try not to be too emotionally um, biased on something. But just be objective and write things down. Experience it for yourself. That's what I've done, man, since like 19, 1996. I've started writing food diaries and playing with food and measurements and that. And that's why I can speak with confidence and experience because I've been doing it for so fucking long. 17 years of measuring shit. Do you recommend eating high-carb, low-fat pancakes like unbleached or whole wheat flour, baking soda, coconut sugar, splash of almond milk, berries and so, then cooking pancake, non sweet pancake? What's your opinion on that? How about topping of maple syrup? Ha ha. When you want carbs, complex carbs, it's your body wants fruits. So fruits is your best option always. If I was going to eat pancakes, I haven't had pancakes for years. If I was going to eat them, I wouldn't have them for breakfast. I'd have them for dinner only. Um, and the fact, I wouldn't add almond milk because the almond milk is generally too fatty. I keep it lean. Lean as fuck. We're adding maple syrup to the pancakes and we're trying to turn that pancake into a fruit. <laughs> the pancake fruit has now become because it's, it's got simple sugars on it. I think it's a healthy meal. Not as good as fruits, obviously, but definitely it's a lean McDougal style meal. And it's a lot of people can do it, man. So definitely I'll give it a thumbs up. I'll give it a thumbs up. With the mindset that fruit's your better option, but if you don't want the fruit, have your vegan pancakes. Low fat, low fat is key. Are you seriously recommending someone that is recovering from a disease like cancer, diabetes, Crohn's, etc. eat this way? If not, I think you should make it clear because misinformation could actually cost someone their life. Well, 
here's the thing, I'm not a medical doctor. All I do is promote other medical doctor literature. We don't have any books nearby. Cancer. Dr. Gerson, Max Gerson. What did he promote? What diet did Gerson promote? 95.5. High carb, high sugar, raw, vegan. 95.5. Diabetes. Um, what's his name? Dr. Um, Neil um, Bernard. What diet does Neil Bernard clinically promote to reverse type 2 diabetes? 9.55. High carb, vegan, low fat. Crohn's disease. David Klein. Most successful Crohn's author around. I don't know anyone on the planet who's had more success with Crohn's and colitis than David Klein. What diet does David Klein promote? 955. High carb. Raw. Vegan. Low fat. I'll eat some potatoes even, he says. Heart disease. <laughs> this person is fucking serious. Dr. Esselstein. Dean Ornish. What do they promote? 955. High carb. Low fat. Vegan. For clinically reversing heart disease. So... Am I seriously recommending people do these diets? Yes, fucking oath, because that's what all the clinical science is promoting and pushing and showing. Read all the internet, read the people's experiences. <laughs> and someone wrote, DTM is the man for that. Harley is all about athletic performance. I'm not all about athletic performance. If I was serious about athletic performance, I'd be on EPO, I'd be on test synthetic testosterone, I'd be on human growth hormone, I'd be on insulin, I'd be on a, what have we got? GW15-16, I'll be on that. I'll be on ACAR. I'll be on selective androgen, androgen receptor modulators. I'll be on a whole host of shit if I was serious about athletic performance. I'm interested in athletic performance, but I'm not dead serious about it. Because if I was, I'd be on all the gear, all the top athletes are using. But what is good for your health is good for your physical performance as well. So let's say we had an athlete on all those drugs... And if they did my dietary and lifestyle advice, that would get even better results. Even better results because the drugs work better when you're healthier. So that's, that's a funny one that people will... I mean, yeah, I could go on that. I won't go on too much more about that one. Harley, on your recent podcast with Ben Greenfield, you should have asked him outright if he thinks he could have any sort of half decent performance on a low-carb diet without any stimulants. Would have been nice to hear a response to that question. I did a podcast with Ben Greenfield recently. Um, we had a really good chat with both of you. We're on the same side of the fence in terms of sport, but when it comes to diet and lifestyle, we're on different ends of the spectrum. Um, ben says he's a low carb athlete, but then he'll next month he'll write, "I don't, I don't actually subscribe to anything. I just eat what I want when I want." So it depends what time of month it is that. Ben's eating low carb, or he says he is. Um, and Ben's a cool guy. We had a good podcast. We'll, I'll, we'll do some more together. Nobody has doesn't even if you're on stimulants, it doesn't matter how much stimulants and drugs you're on. You can't have your best athletic performance on a low carb diet. It's just impossible. It's fucking impossible. I even sent a, 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 a challenge to Peter Atia, who classifies himself as some sort of half-decent cyclist, said, Pete, <laughs> get on Strava with the power meter and show us your watts per kilo, and then maybe I'll take you up on a challenge up Mount Washington. Until then, you're just talking shit. Because um, you can't perform on low-carb, man, compared to what you would on high-carb. You can't. Let's see Peter Atia do five watts per kilo for ten minutes. <laughs> no fucking chance. Not even Ben Greenfield could do that. I mean, maybe if they got some carbs into them, but even then, they'd have to lose a lot of weight to get that, that sort of watts per kilo. So it's, even with stimulants and drugs, even with EPO, you can't perform well on a low-carb diet compared to what you would otherwise. Because it's all that glucose-derived ATP. Everyone admits that. Everyone knows that. Even Ben Greenford will, will say that. You should get your body fat percentage checked. Give us a real reading so we can see. This will prove that your method works for sure. People can't argue with medical facts. Of course, you are thin, and I know you are low fat, but just show it up. To if you want to see how lean I am, just fucking get me to take my shirt off, man. Just leave me to flex the biceps. That's how lean... Oh, you can't really see because of the lighting. But you can have other videos. Look, look, 
when you can see their fucking cheekbones, here's a picture of Lance Armstrong, man. Same body fat as Lance Armstrong on a full cycle of performance enhancing drugs. Same leanness. <laughs> Maybe I could get a little bit leaner, but even Lance didn't hold that leanness for longer than four weeks of the year. Now it's just for the Tour de France. So I can show you body fat percentages, but they don't really mean much because the lighter you are, the harder it is to have 1.8% body fat. Does that make sense? Body, I've done a, just look up the truth about body fat percentage. It's not that accurate. Basically, body fat percent, I talk about it, I'll try with it, but it doesn't mean much because it's more based on your total body mass, your fat mass. That's more important. Basically, look at someone. They look like they're, <laughs> if they look like Duran Ida, who just stepped out of a fucking prison war camp or the Tour de France, they're fucking lean. Otherwise, they're not. Are you concerned about your pancreas due to constant sugar intake? Um, I would be concerned about my pancreas if I was eating a high fat diet, not high carb, high sugar diet. It's not an issue at all. Why don't you eat some protein sources? Ethics? Thank you. Um, plants have got protein in them. Every single plant food has all eight essential amino acids. <laughs> if you're into protein powders and stuff, you can get all the fucking pea protein and everything. You can eat as much fucking plant. You can fucking constipate yourself on 600 grams of plant protein a day if you want, man. You can fuck your kidneys up if you want, eating that much protein. You do what the fuck you want to do. But I do eat protein. Actually, I eat amino acids from plant foods. Every single whole raw plant food contains all eight essential amino acids. So you get enough. That's the funny thing, people. That's good. That's a good sign, people, that with that sort of level of nutrition uh, wisdom uh, coming to my channel and asking these questions, it means that I'm reaching the mainstream audience. That's fantastic. That's a valid question. It's a question I used to ask. <laughs>
risk getting a, a positive doping test. I've got to work out what's going on with my heraticrit. The highest I've seen is 49. Is that a 50? You get a suspension. So what you can do is get like a doctor's certificate and say it's naturally over or whatever. Anyway, I look like a fucking doper, don't I? <laughs> fucking look like a smack addict on EPO. Heading up Mount Lofty. Heading up Mount Lofty. I'm gonna rip the clothes off Mount Lofty. I'm G'd up, been sitting on the computer all day. It's about, what time is it? Five o'clock something. I'm gonna rip up Mount Lofty. Mount Lofty. I've got the record up here. 22 minutes 31 on Strava. No one has beaten that record. So today, I'm going to push it. Will I get a PB? I don't know. The wind conditions aren't the best, but I'm just going to fucking unleash, unload on Mount Lofty. Having a discussion this morning with Doug, Mr. Doug Graham, about my videos. He said, I don't understand how you're eating pizza the other night, but then you said, when you're eating pizza, the reason why you want pizza is because you don't eat enough fruit. So why, Harley, didn't you just eat some fruit? It's a good question. I just want to give the viewers some options, some backup plans, and explain that there's no such thing as emotional eating. <laughs> if you want pizza, you need carbohydrates. So eat carbohydrates, ideally, if you want, from the fruits. What often people do is they're like, just, uh, starving all day, not eating enough, come home and go, fuck, I'd like to get some pizza. And then so they get pizza and go, oh, I'm an emotional eater, you know, just eat some fruit then. Oh, I shouldn't really be eating, you know. But that's, <laughs> that's just crazy, crazy, crazy. What people are doing wrong is they're buying into belief that you can, this is where me and Doug differ. We agree on most points. Respect Doug a lot. Promoted Doug so much over the last seven or oh, ten years almost. Promote rate Doug a lot. We disagree though on the emotional eating thing. I believe it's not possible. Example today, I've eaten three about three thousand calories, three and a half thousand. But I could definitely smash down three pizzas after this run. Or if I ate another twenty banana smoothie, I couldn't eat the pizzas, could I? Because <laughs> you physically can't. Some people say, you don't need to eat that many bananas. That's too much. <laughs> Everything you do, Harley, is too much. <laughs> it's too much running. It's too high heart rate. It's too much. It's too much fruit. It's too much pizza. <laughs> it's just too much. I live in a, a life of excess. What can I say? So, why am I eating pizza when we have the largest raw food website on the planet? I want to show people the importance of eating high carb diet. And I'm broadening the, the audience. So I promote both. Promote the high carb McDougal vegan style, promote the high fruit raw thing, 30 bananas a day, whatever you want to call it. We've got the largest raw food website out there. We always will because we're so passionate about getting the message out there. And we're not driven by money or whatever. We're not driven by fame, we're driven by emails of people going, fuck man, I've got it Harley, I fucking nailed it on the bike. I've I know how to eat my fruit or I know how to get a vegan pizza or whatever. I'm losing the weight, I'm feeling great, I can do this anywhere in the world. Thanks a lot. So that's why we give people options. Options for the win. I'm almost at the car park now, park my bike and uh, smash up this mountain. Let's do it. Lofty, we'll go up to the peak. Mm, gains. It's a fucking good climb. I've got a bit of a crowd here tonight. So we'll see if no one's ever beat me up this climb ever. I've got the fastest time recorded on here on Strava. Got the Garmin 310 on. Just waiting for the satellites to load up. I'm gonna hit it fucking hard. It's all about, as Tyler Hamilton says, when he was blood doping, don't rely on the drugs to push her. You gotta push yourself. All right? I'm not using blood doping, I'm using beetroot doping. You gotta rely on, on up here to push for pain. You can't avoid pain, you just gotta embrace pain. So the whole way up this mountain, I'm just going to be thinking of positive thoughts. Just breathing deep, getting the fresh air. This mountain there, that's what it's about, man. Deep tissue cleansing, fresh oxygen. Bikram yoga, breathing farts and detox. Uh -uh. Come up Mount Lofty, go out the open air, deep breathing, deep cleansing, deep oxygenation at a heart rate of 100 beats a minute. Whew. So I just did that. Can you see how my face isn't really red? I've just finished the run. 
fucking flat out. I did like a, I'm pretty sure I got the record for up and down. A little bit off my slowest time ever, fastest time ever rather, up. I'm gonna go home now, upload the Strava, check it out, but I'm pretty impressed with how fast I ran for November. I've never ran that sort of fast a time in November. Normally I'm peaking around February, March, so it's gonna be an interesting summer. Interesting summer. It was great. I just fucking love that meditation, just there's people on the track, you're going around, you're coming up on them so fast up the hill, they just go and <laughs> they get startled. I'm running up the hill so fast, they're just like, they just can't get it. They can't get out of the way fast enough. They hear me coming, they're like, it's just so fucking undercard, man. So fatted out. But it's good fun. Got the vegan shirt on, mate. Representing. Representing. Smashing up the vegan path. But let's go home now. I'm going to upload to Strava and check out how I did. Strava is very good fun. Let's go check it out. Let's go home. I'm not sure what's wrong with this little guy. So here we are in Strava. I called it a jog. Good arvo for a jog. It's more like a fucking sprint than a jog, but we were just trolling. So you can see I've got the course record on the waterfall gully to the Mount Lofty obelisk and back. That means I've got the fastest time up and back. I'll show you what it means. CR means course record. It doesn't mean calorie restriction. Let's have a look at the overall leaderboard. Let's check it out. Waterfall Gully to Mount Lofty and back. So we can see the profile here. Goes up to the mountain and you got to go back down. My best time. Doing a lot of vegan power. 39.24. First person under sub 40 ever recorded. 293 people have done this run. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Let's just go back to the run and have a little analysis. This is the one that I like to look at. So this time I did 23.46. My best time is at 22.30. So that's, this is a great climb because the wind doesn't really make much difference. So it's really good to see where you're at. So you can see there's 563 people and I'm king of the mountain on this one. And I tend to stay that way. So this is great. And this is the most popular running climb in South Australia. It's a beautiful climb. And it's free. Just get up there and go. So Strava is a great little, great little tool to see where you're at. To see where you're at. It's good to track your, track your training. So if you look at my heart rate. I never went into anaerobic. I kept it. All aerobic. All aerobic. So that's just basically how you use Strava. It's quite a great little uh, website. I highly recommend people get on Strava, get a Garmin, get on there, learn about your body. Learn about how it works and you'll want to take better care of it. So back home now. Got my water here. Just smash that down on the way home. We've got three pizzas for dinner tonight. I've got two more in the oven. This is what I call the 955 pizza. <laughs> 90% carbs, 5% protein, 5% calories and fat. Very lean. I've got the recipe down below in the description text. Have a check down below. So if you want a pizza option, you always have this. People say, what do you reckon? Well, raw pizza, well, raw pizza, man, it's just full of fat, full of grease. Always let up on the carbs, be it fruit or starch. So if you want to have your fruit, have your fruit. If you want to have your pizza, have your fucking pizza. <laughs> I don't know what people are trying to do. Don't try and recreate a raw pizza if you want pizza. Have a fucking pizza. Or have some fruit. Bottom line. There you go. Let's get the camera going. Smash this baby down. So that's the end of pizza number one. I'm watching, watching on YouTube, watching 2003 Tour de France stage eight out the west. It's a pretty cool stage to watch. I was actually there in France watching on out the west that day. That's pizza number one, bub. I'll go to number two. Pizza number two. Let's go. Let's get to it. Let's get back to the Tour, Tour de France. The Austrian rider is now back in the fold. Nobody else did. Take part in the Tour de France. He hails from 
Sandy. Last piece, pizza number two. Just a little bit of pasta fog. Put on a bit of a pizza and pasta night tonight. Watching the Tour de France. Mmm. Carbs, mate. Carbs. Alright, let's go get some pizza. Let's finish it off. Pizza number three. Pizza number three. Put on a jacket. Then cheekbones. Cars make you fat. Carbs load on the body fat. Look at wheat belly. I saw David Wolf did a an art, a little promo for his uh, little longevity warehouse, whatever it's called, longevity conference. And his guest speaker is William Davis, the bacon and egg producer, the bacon and egg promoter. What a joke. Here's a little wheat pizza for William Belly. Put some beetroot on that for the extra nitrates for the endothelium cell health. Bit of nitric oxide boost for that. So pizza round three. Let's get to it. Last little bit of crust. Three pizzas and a bit of pasta. Pizza pasta feast. Man, I am done. Satisfied. I'm ready to go to sleep. I'm going to go outside. Be able to clean the backyard. Just have a good digestion. Stand up and hit the bed. It's almost 10 o'clock. A little bit late eating. Been up since 5.30. Ideally, would have wanted to finish eating around 7 o'clock. But we did that run instead. So, it's all good. Back to start again tomorrow. You see them? I'm knackered. I am knackered. I feel so satisfied. Oh, what a day. What an awesome day. See you soon.